Hey, Campbell Corner time on Pioneer 90.1 on a Wednesday afternoon. Campbell Corner heard Wednesday is at 3.05. And a guest joins me from Moorhead, Minnesota. He gave a presentation at Campbell recently, and his name is Nuzad Brifke. Hello, Nuzad. Hello. Welcome to Pioneer Radio. First things first, uh, a little background on you, where you're from, and how you arrived in the U.S. Well, um, it all started... Uh, in Kurdistan region of Iraq uh, in 1984 when I was born on October 12. I was three years old when the Kurdish genocide happened. I I lost my father in 1985. Uh, He was uh, killed during the conflict between the Kurds and the Iraqi government Mm -hmm. run by Saddam Hussein regime. Uh, In 88, Saddam uh, did a a genocide uh, towards the Kurds where we were gassed with chemical attacks. Um, and the genocide uh, created over uh, uh, close to 200,000 Kurdish people losing their lives, being uh, executed, being buried alive, and horrific other things that are just, uh, um, there are no words for it. So therefore, we had to seek refuge, um, and we went into Turkey after being on uh, the mountain of Kurdistan, uh, region of Iraq's border, the Turks would not allow us in. Uh, the Western countries pressured them. So we came to Turkey four years. We lived in a refugee camp, 88 to 92. 92, some humanitarian organizations uh, were there, and uh, some Lutheran families from Fargo, North Dakota, sponsored our family, and that's how we ended up in Fargo. And we moved to Moorhead in 95. So, yeah. Wow, what a journey. And you graduated high school in Moorhead and earned an undergraduate degree in business and an MBA in 2014. You have accomplished so much in such a short time and experienced so much uh, bad in such a short time as well. You've written a book. It's called My Journey to America. Describe that book for us, if you would. What is it about? My Journey to America, a Kurdish-American story, is a memoir of my life. Um, we all have a unique story to tell, but I think my story is educational, educational in many ways because I reflect on you know, who the Kurds are, what they've been through, the biggest ethnic group in the world w- without their own country, being divided into four parts you know, without their voice or without their say in it. Mm-hmm. After uh, the collapse of the Ottoman Empire during World War One, coming to America, you know, living in a refugee camp, first of all, for four years as a child with, you know, lack of hygiene, lack of food, just daily life was just miserable, being cold, you know, not being able uh, to sleep at night or when the, when the winter seasons would hit, not having, you know, the winter supplies to, to be warm. And so it was just a devastating situation, you know, as a child and not having the playground where a child, you know, really needs to, to, to feel, you know, to have that childhood. And then coming to America, coming to America and, and being welcomed by uh, my neighborhood, the Horace Mann neighborhood in North Fargo, the kids I went to school with who brought me into their homes, their parents who took care of me, who treated me like I was their son when my uh, single mother, which was a widow, could not take care of. She came to the United States with no skills, uh, so, you know, no language. So it was hard for her to provide that those re- uh, those things for us as, as kids. So mm-hmm. the families w- really provided everything. And, you know, after that, we moved, you know, around quite a bit and just trying to assimilate into the American society. The culture was kind of tough because I came from a different background, trying to pick up the English language when I didn't know it. And so, you know, I, 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 I've seen... I've seen a lot through, throughout my life, and, you know, in terms of poverty, um, in terms of making bad choices. But then after high school, I decided, what can I do? How can I become a better person? You know, after I've been through so much, is this the life that I want to continue, or should I try to seek all the opportunities given by this great country? Um, and so I did that. I decided to do um, um, public community service work, uh, Decided to volunteer and work with some nonprofit organizations, get my education, and you know, and I am here today because of that. You know, thanks to my education, thanks to the United States of America for giving me a safe haven, a chance to 
to start a new life uh, for myself and my family. And then, you know, to the American people for for um, being so warm and, and welcoming. This next question is tied to that point you just made about uh, what you experienced in the past and what you have right now. It's more of a comparative question. For Americans who are cradle Americans, uh, people born in this country, and I'm not going to stereotype here, but too often many of those Americans don't realize what life is like beyond our shores. And uh, you have had that experience. Do you have a desire to educate Americans as to how precious their freedom is and what they have? Yes, exactly. And, you know, my intention is for this book to do, uh, this book is is able to do that, to, to talk about the diversity in this country, talk about, you know, we are a nation of many nations. We all have come from all walks of life. So being being the best country in the world is because of the great minds, you know, who are here today, who are working together, uh, contributing to our society, to, to making it the best that it is. We are the best country in the world, yes, and, you know, having everything that we have here and not realizing and, and, and you know, being in the shoes of someone else abroad who lives in a third world country, who, you know, lives lives without the the basic necessities of everyday life that we have here, such as clean water, food on the table, you know, warm clothing, being safe, you know, and not being worried about a being being dropped, a bomb being dropped on us or, mm-hmm. you know, somebody attacking us. So it's, it's, we're really, we're really um, blessed. And, and uh, having said that people who are coming in who are new to our country, we should give them a chance because, the majority of these people are good. They go through vetting process. They go through a screening. Yes, you know, there's going to be a, a bad apple here and there, but, you know, that's that's within our society here in the United States. We have bad apples living with amongst us. Well, again, I wish we had more time. I'm going to mention uh, his book again, Uzad's book, is entitled My Journey to America. Where can folks uh, pick up a copy of that book? Yes, well, um, uh, you can uh, read it at the Campbell Library in East Grand Forks. Um, they have copies there. You can purchase it on Amazon if you're in the Fargo area. You can get it at Zambro's downtown, um, the Plains Art Museum if you're in Moorhead, at the Young Come Center. You can contact the Kurdish Community of America or me personally, and I have uh, copies. I'll be able, you know, I'd be happy to meet with you and sign it for you and give you a copy. Okay, again, uh, this is a very important topic. It's a uh a message of freedom and uh, an appreciation for that freedom. And again, Nuzad is from Moorhead, the Fargo-Moorhead area. He's the founder and director of the Kurdish Community of America. It's a resource center for the vast local Kurdish community members in the Fargo-Moorhead area and also serves as a bridge to the greater community. So we have understanding of people's stories and history. Again, his book, my Journey to America. Fascinating. Nuzad, thank you so much for joining us. I'm glad to be with you. Thank you very much. Nuzad Brifke, our special guest, for Campbell Corner on Pioneer 90.1.